Hey, what's happening guys? I was just hiding under the desk because I thought it would look cool. Um, welcome to freaking, I don't even know what day it is, but we're doing this thing, Fathers Live Show, episode four. Check it out. It's that time of the day, coming to you live from Brooklyn, South Africa, the suburb white people in Cape Town don't know exists. Today, making you laugh, making you cry, making you question the very meaning of life. It's the Fathers Live Show with Howard James Feige. Today we've got some really cool stuff happening for you. It is the very first story time segment. So without further ado, you've asked for it, you're getting it, it's story time. It's not the piano story yet guys, by the way, it's just like another vibe. So pretty cool, but we're not ready for the piano story, not yet. Story time! Ah, hello. I didn't see you there. Hence, I didn't greet you, but now I see you, therefore, I greet you. Welcome to Storytime with Howard James Filey, where we tell unbelievable yet true stories. My name is not Howard, but Mr. Introduction to Storytime segment. Yes, it's a strange name, but my name nonetheless. My sole purpose is to introduce this segment after which I vanish in a puff of smoke. To be perfectly honest, I wish I had slightly more to do than merely introducing the segment. I have stories of my own to tell, struggles I have overcome and battles I have fought. Uh, from a young boy, I was growing up in- Hey guys, welcome to Storytime, episode one. So here's a question. If you are a little two-year-old boy and you've got three older brothers, what is one of the main things that you want as that two-year-old? I'll tell you. You want to be included in the activities that your older brothers are doing. You want to be affirmed and loved and encouraged by those older brothers. Well, that desire that I had as a two-year-old boy resulted in the top half of this middle finger being ripped completely off. Find out how on Storytime with Howard James Fabi. Storytime. It's time for story. Story time with Howard James Valley. This story happened many, many years ago, guys, when I was only 18 months old. So I'm like basically not even really alive and already tragedy strikes. On this particular day, my brother Simon, who was six years old, brought home a friend from school. Uh, and my brother Richard and Walter were all at home and they were all jamming together and hanging out, okay? And my mom was in the kitchen busy making sandwiches for five boys now. And as a little two-year-old, all I wanted to do was be part of that fun, be part of that what is happening with my older brothers, which basically was playing Lego in the one bedroom. So I remember crawling down the passageway and looking at the room where my brother used to sleep and his friend and they were playing inside there and I was like, oh, I want to go and play with them as well. And um, as I'm walking towards the door, they see me and they just like slam the door. <laughs> so I just sat there for a while and then I started to try and knock on the door and I was like, yeah. needless to say, they didn't let me in. At which point my brother Richard heard me like banging on the door and he came and tried to help me get inside. So he starts to come in, hey guys, open up for Howie. At which point everyone stopped playing Lego and they started playing stop each other from getting in or out of the room. So we're pushing and it's kind of evenly matched. It's not really going anywhere. And finally guys, like a little bit of that door opened up. And uh, you know when you can see it opening up, and like, yeah! But for me, as a little two-year-old, I don't understand how doors work. And I don't understand consequences and where one should not put one's fingers. And I was standing on the side of the door where the hinges are and suddenly I saw a little bit of the door opening over here where Richard was. My hand went around the corner and around the edge of the door in between the wood and the hinge and my finger got stuck in there. And at that moment, Simon and his forever shamed friend did something very different. They took a run up and they kicked the door shut. <laughs> I just remember my finger in the door and that thing instantly getting sliced off like a guillotine. It was, it was pretty hectic. Even as, a, even as a 18 year old month baby, I can still remember that moment. Bam! And my finger getting chopped off and just falling onto the ground and I'm just standing there like this like eh, eh, eh. Richard didn't even know that I'd cut my finger off. 
So eventually he looks down at me and I'm just standing there like this and there's just like starts, blood starts to slowly come out of my finger. At which point Richard's just like, Mom! And I just start freaking crying as loud as I've ever cried. So my parent, my mom jumps in the car and she just runs and grabs this thing and off we go to the hospital and um, yeah. So in the end, the finger survived. Um, you can see there's like a bit of a scar vibe around the tip of the finger and check there, it's like a bit of a wonky shape. Thanks mom for pointing it out earlier. It looks weird, but you know what, it still works. Praise the Lord that it grew back fine, no major issues. And now I can zap people without actually zapping them whenever I show them my finger, which is kind of convenient if you're in traffic. You know, what I take away from the story, the moral of the story for me is don't be mean to your younger brothers, guys. All I wanted to do was hang out with Simon and his friend in that room. You didn't have to go and freaking kick slam the door and cut off my finger. Just let me come and play. Like Jesus says, in the Gospels, love one another. If you don't love one another, you end up losing digits on hands. Thank you for listening to this version of, thank you for joining us on this episode of Storytime. Alrighty, have a good one. Ah.